If your WordPress website's running a little slow, I'm gonna show you how to speed it up and we're starting right now. If you wanna transform your website into a customer or lead generation machine, I'll show you all my best tips, tactics, and secrets to get there fast. Let's dive in. Hey there, welcome. I'm Wes McTowell, web strategist for The Deep End. And if you're not subscribed to our channel yet, go ahead and click on the subscribe button and the little bell icon next to it so you never miss another video you need to succeed online. I feel the need, the need for speed. Ow! Yeah, and you know who else does? Google and your site visitors. Not only will a slow website make your potential customers bail early on your website to even see what you can offer them, but Google actually knows how long your site takes to load as well. And they never want to give their users a bad experience, which includes slow loading websites. In other words, speed matters. But it is important to kind of keep things in perspective here and consider the difference between actual full load time and then what I call perceived load time. You know, there are many tools out there that are gonna show you that total load time, which can seem like a long time if it's like eight or 10 seconds. But if the above the fold content loads quickly, you know, in within two or three seconds, what happens is it gives that other content below the fold a little bit of breathing room and a little bit of time to load while people are actually looking at that first image that pops up. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do here is run that speed report just to kind of get a sense of where you're starting from. I like to use gtmetrics.com. It's gonna give you an overall grade or score. It's gonna show you how long your site takes to fully load, as well as the overall page size. And the great thing here is it's gonna show you a list of some of the things your site is getting right and then other improvements you can make as well. But you should definitely take this list with a grain of salt. Some things are just gonna be really impractical to implement based on the way your site is built. And some are gonna be huge time wasters for the amount of time savings that are gonna get you. I look at it like if you ever use the app Waze, uh, it's gonna give you a lot of really roundabout ways of getting places, but sometimes it's gonna save you 30 seconds to have you go through a neighborhood and take a lot of left turns with no red lights. I'll turn this damn bus around. You wanna do a reality check and make sure, okay, is this thing that's gonna take a long time to fix really gonna get you any kind of time savings in the end? If not, then you might just wanna skip it. For instance, if your site's using these really big, beautiful images, um, it's gonna be really hard to get that perfect score. It's really gonna be a balancing act between having a site that loads really fast versus having a little bit more visual content that's gonna make more of an impact and draw more of your prospects into your world, but that might slow your site down to an acceptable degree. And it's all about what's acceptable for you and for your visitors. You know, you should really just look at that priority column to see which things will make the biggest impact and focus on those if you can. All right, on with the list. And the first thing I wanna tell you about is you might need to upgrade from shared hosting to a more dedicated managed WordPress host. Your site's only gonna be as fast as the server that powers it. If you have a slow server, it's probably gonna come up as a to-do action on your GT metrics report. And honestly, most small business websites are perfectly fine being on a shared host, but if that comes up on your report and you start seeing a lot of issues of slow load speed, you might wanna consider it. And the main difference here is a shared host is exactly what it sounds like. You're on a server with a bunch of other websites. A dedicated server is just yours. And of course that does cost more, but if it makes your site load more quickly and more people are sticking around on your site, it's probably gonna be worth the price difference. And it's also really important to go with a host that specializes in WordPress. That's gonna get you on a server that's properly configured to run WordPress websites much more efficiently. Okay, number two is to use a caching plugin. So WordPress pages are basically rebuilt and shown on the fly every time you get a new visitor to your site. And to build your pages, WordPress basically has to scramble to find all the data and then put it all together and then show it to your users. This involves a lot of steps and it can really slow your website down, especially if you have a lot of visitors at the same time. So for this reason, I recommend just about every WordPress site running some kind of a caching plugin uh, like W3 Total Cache. Caching can actually make a huge difference and make your site load about two to five times faster. So here's how it works, basically. 
um, instead of going through that whole page generation process every time, the caching plugin actually just makes a copy of your page and then shows that to every user afterwards. All right, the next thing you wanna do is optimize your images. So according to HTTP Archive, images make up around 50% of a page's total size. So because of that, you can get some pretty big improvements just by optimizing your image sizes. So when we're talking about optimizing your images, there are basically two ways to do that. The first way, uh, refers to the actual dimensions of your photos. Um, I see all the time with clients, they'll kind of take a picture with their phone or they'll download a stock image in the full dimensions of it. You know, then they'll upload this really big files of like 5,000 pixels or more, and they'll upload that right into their WordPress site. Well, the average browser window size for most people viewing your website is about 800 pixels wide. So basically you're uploading an image that's way too big. I actually recommend uploading images around 1400 pixels wide for those hero images. You can go up to 1900 for those big displays, but most people aren't gonna see it that big. So I think it's okay that it be a little lower resolution for those outliers. So just make sure you upload something that's a more or less the right physical dimensions. Now the next piece of the puzzle is compression. So what this does is it takes those properly sized images and it makes them even smaller from a file size point of view. And if this all sounds complicated, like too many steps, you have to shrink the image down and then you have to make it even smaller on a second step. There's actually quite a few plugins that you can get for free that'll take care of all of this for you automatically. I like to use Smush. It really doesn't reduce the quality much and it does a great job compressing those file sizes. All right, next, lose the sliders. I can't tell you how many websites I still see that have that big image slider on the top of their homepage with the rotating images and the rotating headlines. Not only are these really bad at conversions, they've done many studies on it, they don't really work very well, but they also really weigh a page down size-wise. And that of course means slower load times. And this is for two reasons. You know, basically they're using multiple images up top. These are usually pretty big images. So that's gonna weigh it down on one side. The other side is there's a lot of code involved to make that work. So of course that takes extra time to load. And the worst part is it's right at the top of the page. So if it's not loading, people are just looking at a blank screen. So it's an easy fix. I recommend just getting rid of the slider altogether and replacing it with one nice big image and one great headline. All right, next you wanna find and remove slow plugins. So if you've had a site for a while, uh, you, you may have gone in and added plugins over the years, some of which you may not even be using anymore, but they're still there and they're still slowing your site down. Now I'm not saying you're necessarily gonna wanna delete all of these slow plugins, you may need some of them. Just take a look and if something's slowing you down and you know you don't need it or you don't even use it, just delete it. All right, this is along the same lines and that's to remove unnecessary widgets like social sharing widgets or video players. So these elements basically need to call out to their own servers, like from Facebook or YouTube. And if you combine those requests with everything else that your site has going on, it can really start to slow down the process. So let's talk about those social sharing widgets, which are great to have, but I definitely recommend you only put those on your posts, like your articles or your podcasts or videos, anything like that that's, that's actually shareable. Because most people are not going to be sharing your homepage or your service pages. They just don't really do that. And as much as I love videos on a website, if you've watched any of my other videos before, you know I always talk about this, I definitely recommend one great video on your homepage or on a service page. What you don't need is a grid of five or 10 videos. Speaking of which, Never upload videos directly to your website. If you're smart enough to include video on your website, you should always be uploading it to you know, YouTube. You could do Vimeo, but YouTube is generally better for SEO, but that's a subject for a different video. So ideally you would upload your video to YouTube and then just embed it on your website. Hosting it yourself is just gonna be a huge drain on your server, which makes everything slower. And this definitely goes for those ambient background videos, which is where I see the self-hosting problem the most. Those should also be hosted on a dedicated video platform like YouTube. They're just better equipped for it. They're a video platform, they have the bandwidth, and it takes much less strain on your server just to call it up rather than hosting it. All right, next up, use lazy loading. So remember in the beginning of this video how I talked about the idea of perceived load times? Well, that's what this tip is all about. By using a lazy load plugin, only the content that's in the browser window is gonna be loaded. 
Then when the user scrolls down, the other elements start to load just before they come into view. This not only speeds up your page loads, but it also saves in bandwidth because it doesn't have to load up all that data for people who aren't scrolling all the way down to the bottom of the page. All right, this next one isn't really gonna matter so much if you only serve a local area, but if you're more global or more national, you might wanna use a content delivery network. A content delivery network, or CDN, is gonna help your page load faster for visitors all around the world. And here's how that works. So without a CDN, every single visitor in the whole world, whether they're in LA or New York, or Australia even, has to download your website from your server. And let's just say whatever hosting plan you have, the physical server is located in Chicago. So a CDN helps by storing copies of your website in various servers around the world, and then whenever a visitor from anywhere tries to access your site, they're gonna get the copy that's on the server closest to them. That really reduces the lag time and of course page load speed because of that. Now I probably recommend using Cloudflare for this. They do have paid plans, but they have a free plan and for most of you, most small businesses out there, the free plan is gonna be just fine. But now I wanna hear from you and I wanna know, have you tried any of these tips or anything else to speed up your website? And if so, how did it work? I wanna know all about it, so leave that in the comments below with any questions you have and I'll try to, I'll look through everything and I'll answer all the questions that I possibly can. And if you're not subscribed to the channel yet, go ahead and click on the circle icon right here to subscribe. And if you like this video, here are two more that I think you're gonna like just as much, if not more than this one. So go ahead and pick one of those um, and we can keep hanging out and learning together. So I'm Wes McDowell for The Deep End and I'll see you in one of those videos.